1980, a movie fame, depicting the struggle of aspiring young actors and singers trying to make it in show business will be a box office smash. Not only would the film shadow records in the war shows, but it would also make instant stars out of the actors who were part of the main cast. Out of all the actors in the film, none displayed a multitude of talent for dancing, acting, and singing like Gene Anthony Ray. Unlike his co-stars, Gene was an untrained talent who shot to superstardom, especially once fame was made into a television show. He seemed to be well on his way, with heights unknown. By 21, he amassed a fortune rumored to be in the millions, but before he turned 30, he was so destitute that he was sleeping on park benches. On this episode of Exposed, we look at the great rise and terrible demise of one of the greatest modern dancers and actors of the 1980s, Gene Anthony Ray. When Gene was a young child, barely able to walk, his mother would take him to bars and clubs and watch him dance while music was playing on the jukebox. He was so amusing to watch, he would often gather a crowd. His mother said he was born to dance because he came out feet first. As he got older, he became a street dancer and would compete in various competitions and talent shows in the neighborhood and would consistently win prizes and awards mostly in cash. At a young age, he developed an interest in studying dance as a possible career and auditioned for the New York School for Performing Arts and was accepted. However, things didn't go well. He was constantly getting into trouble and had a contentious relationship with the teachers and staff. It was rumored that on one occasion he even smacked a teacher while they were in an argument. And, unfortunately, before the year was out, he was expelled and had to transfer to another school. Unlike regular schools, performing arts schools can be very demanding. The hours alone can be overwhelming and that's why a lot of students don't continue after their first year. In most performing arts schools, you show up early in the morning, sometimes as early as 7 o'clock, and take regular academic classes until lunch. Then during the evening time, you study your different art forms and participate in rehearsals that could usually last until 7 or 8 o'clock at night. The discipline can be very intense. Growing up, Gene was passionate about dancing but felt that he had to act tough and bold in order to avoid the stigma of being a pushover. He confessed in interviews as a modern dancer he had to develop a persona for not taking crap off anyone in order to protect himself. Down the line, this may have hurt him because he came off to his teachers and elders as having an attitude problem. This hurt him academically as well. He later told Seventeen, I got kicked out. I had beefs with the teachers and settled them the way Leroy would, by cursing the teachers out. According to his mother, Gene had nothing more than a third grade education. Eventually, he found out about the movie Fame and decided to audition for a role. Over 2,800 actors auditioned for the role of a dancer named Leroy, and Gene stood out from all of them. 
According to the Daily Telegraph, the film's choreographer, Louis Falco, said of Ray's audition, Gene uncovered something inside of me that I hadn't witnessed before. He was just incredible. I felt like I was in the same shoes as the person who had maybe seen Fred Astaire for the first time. What made it monumental was Gene was competing against dancers who had formal training, which made his accomplishments stand out even more. In the end, he got the part and the rest was history. There was just one slight problem. Gene's mother at the time was still a drug kingpin dealing heroin and cocaine. By the time Gene was preparing for his role in fame, the authorities were on to his mother and developing a sting operation to take her down. In the fall of 1980, fame hit the theaters. Made on a budget of $8 million, it grossed over $46 million at the box office, which was considered a smash. Aside from that, it was nominated for multiple Oscar and Grammy Awards and made instant stars out of the leading cast. After this success, the producers decided there was no other choice but to make a TV version of the film. Several actors, including Gene and Irene Cara, were offered to reprise their roles for the television show. Gene was one of the four who decided to take up on the offer. What was eerie about Gene's character as Leroy was the amazing similarities the character had to his real life. Just like Leroy, he could barely read and write. Also, he could throw a temper tantrum and destroy things if instigated. In the fall of 1982, Fame debuted on TV during a nighttime slot, however, did not initially perform well. Producers decided best to revamp the show on another network and play it during the daytime syndication hours, and that's when it took off. Also, they made another change. To film the TV show, the producers decided to film in LA, California instead of New York as it was depicted. This meant Gene had to relocate. On a good note though, Gene was accumulating wealth and popularity. He became so popular in fact that he had to hire two secretaries to answer the 17,000 fan letters that he was getting on a regular basis. The show was big in the US, but a real juggernaut in the UK, accumulating over 11 million viewers on a regular basis. Gene made an instant impact not only on the TV show, but amongst his peers as well. He was heavily admired for being so multi-talented, especially with his dancing. However, there was one major issue, and that was his lack of discipline. Out of all the members of the cast, he was the most erratic when it came to partying and having fun. He developed a drug and drinking habit. He, as well as the other cast members, were under a lot of stress. Part of this was due to the treatment the main cast was getting while filming the season. Compared to actors for most shows, the fan cast were under a lot of pressure due to the harsh treatment from working horrendous hours. Considering they were a dance and song ensemble, rehearsals were longer and more intense. Occasionally, they also had to spend time in the recording studios as well. To make matters worse, during mid-season and vacation times, producers sent the cast over to the UK to perform tours, which included more strenuous hours of rehearsal and then performing two concerts a night on a regular basis. 
And another issue the actors had to deal with was Debbie Allen, who was responsible for choreographing the shows, who was seen as being extremely harsh and a taskmaster. At this point, some actors quit the show due to the harsh treatment. The tours were so successful overseas that three months later, producers sent the cast over there again, and that's when it really started to get out of control. As far as touring abroad, the pressure and stress at times got so bad that they would turn to drugs and alcohol and anything else that was available to deal with the issues that they had. Out of all the cast members who got out of hand, Gene was seen as the absolute worst. Aside from his issues though, he was basically well liked among the cast. However, his role on the TV show was quickly in jeopardy when the authorities finally decided to come down on his mother and the drug ring that she was operating. Around the time the TV show started really taking off, Jean's mother was finally arrested in a sting operation. Out of the 14 arrested, eight came from Jean's family. They arrested three uncles, three aunts, his mother and his grandmother. Ray's mother, 46-year-old Jean Ray, was charged with selling heroin and cocaine. During the sting operation, she had mistakenly sold to undercover cops in areas like bars. His grandmother, 66-year-old Viola, was carrying six ounces of cocaine and a loaded 38 caliber pistol when she was arrested. In March 1984, after a two-week trial, Ray's mother was found guilty. She was given 15 years. During the trial phase of her incarceration, Jean had a hard time dealing with it and started missing rehearsals and over the course of time it really became a problem. At the point where he missed over 100 rehearsals and his admitted drug issues, the producers decided to terminate him from his contract. Aside from this, the show would lose several more actors who didn't like the way they were treated on the set and a new cast was brought in to replace most of the originals. Eventually, Gene's use of drug and alcohol started to show itself during his time off. He really let himself go. Some of the cast members expressed their concern and tried to help him. Aside from that, also another issue was Gene was getting out of shape and squandering all of his money. While taping the show, Gene had accumulated a small fortune money to over a million dollars. He used some of the money, 400000 to be exact, to purchase a home in a suburban white neighborhood in Long Island, New York. He told people that he bought the home as a weekend getaway and his intention was to move in with his brother permanently after he graduated from high school. However, that would never happen. Before he could settle in this home, it was destroyed in a fire. When an investigation was done, it was determined that the house was set ablaze in a case of arson. Someone had poured gas in four areas around the house and then set it ablaze. By the time firefighters were able to stop the blaze, it was completely destroyed. Gene always believed the arson was racially motivated. To make matters worse, Gene also gained 30 pounds and really let himself go. Luckily, this was only temporary. After his mother's trial was completed, he somewhat got his act together, lost the weight, and the producers brought him back to the show. They developed a storyline where he graduated and would come back as a dancing teacher. However, at this point, he went from being on the main cast to only a supporting role. Also around 1985, the producers had made some changes, replacing the initial writers who made the show a hit, and eventually the TV ratings really took a major drop. In 1987, the fame show finally ended 
and that's when Gene's problems really started to begin. By this time, Gene had blown through most of his fortune and was desperately looking for work. He initially got work in music videos and, and bit parts in movies. He was also cast in several stage plays, but most of them didn't last very long. Eventually, he turned to becoming an erotic dancer to support himself. He had hope, though. There were rumors that fame would be revamped. And eventually that did happen. However, the producers of the new version of the show, Fame LA, decided not to cast him for a part. Eventually, he left the country altogether. He attempted to start his own dance company similar to Avanelli, but that failed. To make matters worse, he also had minor legal problems. In one instance, he got into trouble when he stole some alcohol and attacked some men who were taunting him. Eventually, he would disappear off the grid for about three years. Gene eventually moved to Milan and had hopes of starting his own dance studio similar to what he was doing on Fame. However, that never worked out. He eventually became so destitute that he moved in with an adult film star and was rumored to be sleeping on park benches. Eventually, he moved back to the U.S. He got cast in the movie Out of Sync directed by a castmate Debbie Allen in 1995, but stopped getting major offers after that. But that was the least of his problems. Eventually, his pardoning caught up with him. In 1996, he was diagnosed HIV positive. In the 1990s, the AIDS epidemic was at its peak, taking the lives of 30 million and 16,000 getting infected on a regular basis. At this time, the medicine given to treat it was extremely harsh. Back during the 80s, if you were diagnosed HIV positive, your expected lifespan was anywhere from six months to a year. By the 1990s, that changed with a drug called AZT, which made the body extremely weak. Also, it was extremely expensive, with costs starting around two to three hundred dollars a month, and not usually covered by insurance. Gene, at this point, reconnected with his mother, who decided to help take care of him. However, as the millennium was coming, things were getting worse. In June 2003, Gene suffered a severe stroke. He lost full use of his legs and became partially blind. He needed a cane just to be able to walk again and wore thick glasses to help with his bad vision. He also began slurring his words on a regular basis. All of Gene's issues were quiet until a documentary about the Fane cast was done and he showed up looking sick and worn down. Most of the cast was so upset over how much he deteriorated that they found it a challenge just to contain themselves. Gene appeared in the documentary shortly after being discharged from the hospital. In the interview, Gene stated that he was back living in America and he had hopes of someday getting back on TV. He was offered scripts to do things and wasn't sure how things were going to work out. Hmm. Unfortunately, this documentary will be his last public appearance. Shortly after filming, Gene was back in the hospital due to complications from the stroke. While at the hospital, his mother realized that he wasn't going to make it and called many of his friends and family to say one last goodbye. On November 2003, Gene Anthony Ray died from complications of a stroke. He was 41 years old. Unfortunately, unlike his castmates, Gene wasn't able to capitalize on his early success. I believe he would have been able to manage the highs and lows of superstardom had he continued his education at the School for Performing Arts. He would have learned to master the art of discipline.
Eugene never had good schooling as a child, so it was difficult for him to function and adjust in a high school setting as well. And after getting the fame TV show, he dropped his education altogether. Most of the cast says that he was the most talented, but he didn't have good mentorship to guide him for life after fame. Hopefully his life could be considered an inspiration to those interested in art and learning their craft. His impact must have been great because 20 years after his death, people still speak of his talent.